TripLogic's file system auditor solution records all user file system activity on Windows servers. Running as a file system driver, file system auditor intelligently audits each read, write, move, delete, and any other file system activity, recording it to a centralized database for reporting. In this brief demonstration, I'll show you how File System Auditor is easily configured to audit file system activity and then how quickly reports can be generated in email. The first thing you'll notice on the screen is that there are two applications that make up File System Auditor, a service configuration utility, which is installed on each server that you wish to audit in order to configure the auditing, and then the reporting console, which is used to generate the reports. Let's start with the service configuration utility since that's what you're going to have to configure first. You'd establish the database that you want to do populate. We support both SQL and MSDE, as well as the database credentials that you'd use to connect to that database. And then follow that by setting the file path filters. Now, File System Auditor would give you a list here of all the different files and folders that you've configured to audit. Unlike native file system auditing that populates the event logs, you'd have to go into the properties of a given file or folder, go to the Security tab, go to the Advance button, go to the Auditing tab within the Advanced Security dialog box just to see the auditing, and remember you'd have to do that on each file and folder that you'd want to audit and establish the auditing settings. In this case, you're getting a bird's eye view. You establish nothing more than the path, whether it be a file or folder, and we support wildcard characters. Then whether you want to include or exclude events, and then you simply check or uncheck the boxes of the different events that you want to audit. You also note on the right hand side that you can establish include and exclude file masks based on file extension. Once that's done, you can test with this real time viewer here to make sure that the events that you want to audit, just opening up a couple of documents here, looking at a couple of folders, that you see that the entries that you want to audit are actually populating. Now, this is not the database that you're looking at. This is just a real-time viewer. The information is actually populating behind the scenes to an SQL server. But this is your way of verifying that, yeah, that's actually what I do want to audit. Once you're certain that that's what you want to audit, you can go to the reporting console. Now, this is installed separately because it doesn't have to be on the server that's being audited. This could be installed on your workstation because you're going to connect to an SQL server establishing the server name and the database name here. So it doesn't matter where you install it. We use six filter criteria in order to determine what it is that I want to generate the report for. I can start with the date or time range. I can pick a number of hours, the previous number of hours. I can also pick uh, a date range where I can pick days and times. So I can pick, for example, from April 1st at 7.09 a.m. to May 12th at 8.09 a.m. as an example. I can pick the users that were involved in, in what I'm looking for. It could be everyone. It could be specific usernames that I can check independently. Or if there's a large number of users, but maybe they're all affiliated by group, I can add groups based in, on Active Directory. And let's say I want to say everyone that's in the accounting group, and then I'll see everyone that's in the accounting group as opposed to having to select individually each of the users in the accounting group. I'm going to stick with all users. I can pick individual events. Again, going back to the same checkbox as we saw in the service configuration utility, I can choose to see any time. Maybe I'm just looking for access denied, or maybe I'm just looking for deletes, as the case might be. Again, I'm going to pick all events so I can see everything. I can pick a specific path. I can also choose to look at specific processes. These processes are populated based on the events that occur in the file system. So, for example, you see Excel and Word and Access. You don't see, let's say, PowerPoint. And the reason is I haven't used PowerPoint in order to generate a file system activity. Again, I'm going to use all processes. And then I can pick individual servers. I'm running in a VMware session, so I only have a single server listed, but in your case, if you had this installed on multiple servers across your enterprise, you would see all the servers listed. This six criteria allow you to narrow the focus in different ways. It could be as focused as saying, show me everyone that accessed this file and performed this action, let's say deleting uh, an accounts payable file. Or it could be more focused in another area. Instead of focusing on a certain file or a certain activity, it might be focusing in on a certain user. You might ask the question, show me what Bob did on every server in every file and folder everywhere on my enterprise today. So you can choose to be as broad or as narrow in, in different ways with this criteria. 
Now that gives us a resultant set from the database. And you'll note that it shows me individual file reads, file deletes, file modifieds. It'll show me the name of the file and folder as, as appropriate. But the thing that I really want to show you where this product shines is that when I have things like a move, a move shows up as a single entry in File System Auditor. If you were to use native auditing, you would have uh, 42 entries in the event log that were related to a move of a single file. In this case, we show you the path where it was before in its shared files accounting. And then we showed the, what we call the rename path, which would show that it was moved to shared files accounts payable. So it's a single entry here, making this very intelligent for you when you're trying to decipher what's occurred. You can generate then a report. And that report can, will, will use a common uh, interface, a common look and feel. And then you can take that report and export it out to a number of common formats that you'll be used to seeing, such as PDF, HTML, uh, Excel, spreadsheet, text, whatever you'd like. Now, that's all real-time reporting. That is, on demand, you're doing it right now, I want to see what's occurred within a certain time range by a certain user, etc. File System Auditor also allows you to schedule reports. You'll establish a scheduled report using a couple of brief criteria. I'll establish a name, like accounting activity. And then I have three different types of schedules, frequently, daily, and weekly. Weekly starts off with a, a, a certain time of day on a certain day of the week. Daily would be every single day at a certain time of day. And then frequently we're considering to be real time. Now you say, wait a second, Nick, it says real time, but it says here every five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and so on. Well, we're still considering it real time because we've chosen to implement this as every uh, number of minutes from a productivity standpoint, not a functionality standpoint. And let me explain that. We have the ability with File System Auditor, the moment an event occurs, to send you an email. But let's say that within a five minute time frame, um, you've left your filter criteria down here way too broad. You said, show me everything that everyone does on every server everywhere. Well, if we were to leave this as real time, every time something happens, you'd get a brand new email in your uh, inbox. That means that you might have, within five minutes, a thousand emails in your inbox to go through with a single event and a report. It doesn't make any sense. So again, from a productivity standpoint, we've chosen to say, let's do this frequently, and we'll do it every five minutes, and we'll sum up all of the different activities that have occurred and give you a single report every five minutes with a thousand entries in it. That makes far more sense. So you can look at one report with a thousand entries rather than a thousand reports with a single entry each. We utilize the same filter criteria and then you establish who it is that you wish to send email addresses to. You specify this of course with uh, your own SMTP names whatever the case might be and we do that because our uh, scheduling of email of reports is not based on any email platform. It's doing it based on an SMTP email platform, not Exchange or Lotus Notes specifically or any particular product. You establish email settings with an SMTP server, the port name. You can put in authentication credentials if necessary. If it doesn't support uh, anonymous relaying. And then a, a from email address if you want. You can also send an email to test out those credentials, those configuration options. So File System Auditor very easily allows you to audit file system activity configured on a per server basis, allows you to re set up reporting, whether it be on demand in real time or scheduled, and consolidates this information to create a secure audit trail for compliance purposes, for validation of security configuration purposes. So it becomes a, a very easy tool to use but has a very much an enterprise focus, providing you a secure environment, an ability to establish compliance and do so in a productive manner.